Hello there, it's Juliana Michaels and welcome to my channel. I'm finally getting around to sharing how I created this Make It Merry Candy Cane Background Christmas card for the Tim Holtz Stampers Anonymous Live. I promised to share it after Halloween and then all of a sudden November is nearly over. I'm not sure where the time is going. If you're interested in the supplies I've used to create this card, you can find links to them in the description box below. When you shop through those links, it supports me, and I really appreciate that so much. There is also a blog post available with more photos if you're interested in looking at the card up close and in more detail. So without further ado, let's get into the making. I'm going to be working with the Jolly Holiday Stamp Set by Tim Holtz, and I'm going to be using the candy cane to create the background for my card. The archival inks I'm using are Fired Brick, Barn Door, Crushed Olive, Kitsch Flamingo, and Peeled Paint. On the back of the stamp, you might want to look at yours and see how it's cut, but there is a nice edge here with no space, so I'm going to start with that at the edge of my paper and pick that up with the stamping block. Now I'm going to use a temporary adhesive to hold my paper in place and I'm working with a piece of Distress Heavy Stock Cut to 3 quarter by 4 half inches. So then we're just going to ink up the stamp and stamp in the upper corner. and I can use that to help line up the next one. I'll be cleaning the stamp in between colors with this clear stamp cleaner by Ranger because the colors can get contaminated unless you want to wait and let the ink dry completely on the stamp between switching colors. Now I'm stamping with Kitsch Flamingo and lining up the top of the stamp with the bottom of the previously stamped image. I then just repeat the stamping making sure to clean off the stamp before I apply the next color. It's a bit of a slow process, but the end result is so cool looking. And if you only knew how many times I did this background trying different ideas until I settled on this one, I think I did it about five times trying different techniques because originally I had this idea in my head of wanting the candy canes to look like actual candy canes that were separate and shiny. And I tried stamping and cutting them out, adding heat embossing and glossy accents. I tried all kinds of things and finally gave up and settled on this technique with no shininess on the candy canes. Here's a look at the completed candy cane striped background. Next up, I'm going to use the Santa image from Jolly Holiday and a sentiment from the Christmas cartoon stamp set to create some uh, an embellishment for the card. 
Oh, that's Santa. Santa. And the Make It Merry. Stamp more than once. So I'm going to be stamping in Barn Door Archival Ink. To make this all one, let's clean off our stamp so it's not going to contaminate our uh, area here. And then you're going to line up the Mary with this part here. Okay. And stamp the Mary. And it won't have matter if you stamp open, so you're just going to trim it all out. So there you go. <laughs> okay. And then we'll use scissors or paper trimmer to trim that out. This so can go in here. Do paper trimmer method. Just use one not like so it's more straight. <laughs> this. From a teeny bit more off the top, teeny sliver. There you go. And you can slide it in, trim off the edges a little more. There you go. And then I'm going to just fussy cut Santa here. Next up, I used the stacked postage dies from Tim Holtz, but any postage die would work. I have a couple other options listed in my supply list below. I also cut a rectangle to fit inside the postage edge piece. These are both cut from Distress Heavy stock, and I'm going to layer them here in the center of the card. Here I'm just inking the edges of the candy cane background piece with some vintage photo Distress ink. And then the edges of the sentiment the fussy cut Santa, and then the layers for the posted stamp piece. Now I'm going to use the Holiday Postmark Stamp Set by Tim Holtz and add a little postmark cancellation detail to the posted stamp piece. I'm using the same temporary adhesive to help hold the paper in place and then just making sure everything is lined up so I can repeat the stamping. I'm using frayed burlap archival ink as my ink.
As you can see, I'm not just stamping on both layers, but stamping it on the top layer, removing it and re-stamping the image so I get a nice clean stamped image. When you stamp over layered pieces of paper, you often get a little gap where the image isn't stamped because of the differences in height of the paper. This technique fixes that issue, but it's also not necessary if the gap doesn't bother you. Next, I'm going to adhere the various layers together using a tape runner and double-sided foam tape. I'm not a huge fan of using liquid adhesive, but that's mostly because I often change my mind about the placement of things and the tape runners, while permanent, are still easier to peel up without totally ruining everything. For this next part, I'm going to be working in a splat box and using Distress Mica Stain and Holly Branch. You want to make sure to mix it up really well until no more mica is sitting on the bottom of the bottle. For this part of the card, I'm working on a piece of Distress watercolor paper. Before I add the mica stain, I'm going to spritz the paper with some water. This just lets the mica stain start moving around a little and makes the ink flow more. You can also add the water after you spray the mica stain. Now I'm going to use my heat tool to speed up the dry time. I want a little more interest, so now I'm slowly squeezing the trigger on the Distress Sprayer so that the water comes out in larger droplets. I then start drying again, add some water droplets, and continue drying the paper. Once it's partially dry, I use a paper towel to lift off some of the ink and create a little more variation and interest. And then continue with the drying. Here's a look at the mica stain background. The shimmer and shine from the mica is just so gorgeous. I then finish off this panel by inking the edges with Vintage Photo Distress Ink. Here's a look at the completed card. I added another panel of Distress Heavy Stock behind the candy cane background and behind the mica stain background to frame in the image of Santa and the sentiment. I then finished it all off with a bit of red and white baker's twine. I hope you enjoyed today's video and learning how this card came together. Until next time, stay crafty, my friend. Thanks so much for watching. I'm so grateful for you. I was wondering if you could do me a quick favor and subscribe to my channel or leave me a thumbs up or a comment. If you're feeling extra generous, I'd love for you to share about my channel with your friends. All of these things help out us YouTubers so much and it would mean so much to me to have your support.